So all of them are guys. And doesn't this look familiar to anyone? I mean, this is literally the bad ending from Pikmin 1. Uh-oh. Okay, we can't avoid it anymore. We need to talk about the Pikmin timeline because if you walked up to anyone on the street and was like, oh, let me explain to you the Pikmin timeline, they probably think you're crazy. They, they might think you need a little help, a little cuckoo, a little crazy in the head. Let's just get down to it because I'm very normal and sane, obviously. So yes, as I said, probably an hour or two hours ago, I don't know where we are at this point in the editing. I'm just assuming I'm sitting at the computer and crying myself to sleep every night right now in the editing grind. Anyways, so as I said, probably an hour ago, the story of Pikmin 4 starts by basically retconning the entire franchise. Olimar crashes on the planet and then explicitly says that he encountered and named the creature he finds, calling them the Pikmin. Now you see, that's a major problem if we're analyzing the continuity of this franchise, right? Because it means we either have to accept that Pikmin 1 or Pikmin 4 was his first time meeting the Pikmin and it can't be both, can it? Unless he has amnesia. So we have no choice but to interpret this as a parallel timeline. We have to pretend as if Pikmin 1 just never happened in this universe. And to a degree, that's not unfeasible to accept. I mean, we just experienced a 15-day recreation of the first game. So here's where we're at. Let's say Pikmin 1 never happened, at least not in the same way as the 2001 title. It happened as it did in Pikmin 4, and Olimar suffered the bad ending that was ultimately present in Pikmin 1 as well. And he turned into a leafling which also kind of happened in Pikmin 1, just without a dog to pluck him out of the ground. So this leads to the next question. Do we accept this as where Pikmin 1 is slotted into the timeline? As in, do Pikmin 2 and 3 take place right after this game, making it Pikmin 4, then Pikmin 2, then Pikmin 3? Well, to tell you the truth, it's actually entirely plausible. We get all this lore dump because Pikmin 4 brings back the series classic Piclopedia and the Treasure Hoard. The Piclopedia being the place where you can read and learn about the enemies you encounter, even interacting with the enemies by abusing them with the vegetables and the treasure hoard is where we can read up and learn about the treasures we collect and even interact with a few you can read the new captain's perspectives on the treasures or Almar and louis and you know no offense to the new people but who are you and why should i care well something very interesting can be read on the page for the mechanical harp which plays the pikmin 3 title theme in the log Almar talks about how this is a premonition of his future now does this alone confirm that pikmin 3 has not happened yet well to answer that it's time that we analyze and talk about some old friends from Copite, the planet of the explorers of Pikmin 3. These are none other than York, Nelly, and Doug Burnham. You know, the Hollywood reboots are just never as good these days, are they? Okay, so at first, I don't know why they threw in clones of the Pikmin 3 captains, which is the obvious callback here. It just came off as weird to me and almost disrespectful to the fans. But if we're able to believe the theory that Pikmin 3 comes after this game, it might make a lick of sense, maybe even a smooch of sense. These captains tell us explicitly there's an impending food crisis coming to Copite, meaning, no, as of Pikmin 4, Pikmin 3 has not happened yet. For for the purposes of this discussion, I'll jump ahead and tell you that Louis does survive to the end of Pikmin 4. I know, huge spoiler, they didn't kill off one of the biggest Pikmin characters in an E-rated game. This does seem to confirm that Pikmin 1 happened as an alternate timeline, but not the Pikmin 1 we know. Olimar suffered the bad ending, Pikmin 4 is the experience after that, followed by Olimar being sent to the planet with Louis, with Pikmin 2 happening after and Pikmin 3 happening when the impending copied food crisis happened. This makes sense to a degree, right? As Pikmin 1 and 2 seem to share the same areas just with the repurposed assets. How did all the treasures in caves appear if they were never to be seen prior? It's not like they were gone that long. In this scenario, Olimar was definitely more likely to pick up the bottle cap that sent him back to the planet in the first place, which we know never happened on screen in Pikmin 1 as we saw his entire adventure. Here, there could have been a moment, maybe in the time he spent in the kitchen, when he grabbed the bottle cap. And because there seems to be treasures and caves everywhere on this planet, it was consistent when Olimar came back to find just as many caves in other areas. This theory also explains the dolphin, how it's back in circulation, which couldn't have been possible after it was sold for parts in Pikmin 2, and checks out with Olimar saying in Pikmin 3 this is the third time that he's been to this planet. Now you may think with Louis being evil, Olimar would have cut ties with him and called it a day. Now this is where things do get a bit shaky, but I think we have to accept that Olimar and Louis basically took two separate rides home, or maybe because Olimar is just an ass, or Louis didn't pay for gas money. Olimar showed up second here though. Louis was at the company corporate meeting, whatever this is, and in a rash decision, the president ordered Louis to go back, and Olimar, just being a simple working man suffering at the hands of capitalism, had to suck it up and listen, even though it's obvious Louis is fucking evil. And there seems to be a secondary piece of supporting evidence, too, that Pikmin 2 hasn't happened yet. Olimar, in one of his voyage logs, says he dreamt about Louis bankrupting the company by eating the golden pick-pick carrots, and the president 
Ugh, gross. Okay, but while this is a dream, Olimar laughs at the scenario as it's unrealistic and it, it wouldn't have happened. So there you have it. It's Pikmin 4, then Pikmin 3, then Pikmin 2. Very logical, and that's obviously where the story stops here. Except... So why does Olimar act like white Pikmin and purple Pikmin are new in Pikmin 2, as well as the game's plethora of inhumane enemies? Is Olimar on crack cocaine? Is he on some sort of medication? Why do the onions merge into one in this game, but not in two, and then they merge again in three? Why does Olimar say the word sperm in the Piklopedia? Why does Olimar know that Bullman exists now, but not later? Also, Olimar directly says that he had a crash landing due to a meteor. So is this his experience of Pikmin 1 in the past, or are we just to accept that this guy crashed his ship like five times. We're just sitting there, Nintendo spood feeding us a bunch of bullshit. Well, I think there's one definitive answer here. Because this franchise takes place in space, there seems to be an interdimensional rift in the space-time continuum, causing alternating timelines impacting the entire landscape of the universe. One timeline is the Captain Olimar from Pikmin 1 timeline. He crash lands, and Pikmin technology develops in the appropriate manner. Olimar meets Louie for the first time in the start of Pikmin 2, and they get lost again in three. In this timeline, Pikmin 4 is in canon, but Pikmin types like Low Pikmin, Ochi, and Ice Pikmin still exist as evidenced by the end of cutscene. The second timeline is the rift in time where the crash landing led to the events of Pikmin 4, which continues into Pikmin 2 and 3. In this timeline, the events of Pikmin 1 aren't canon, and the Pikmin 1-like experience takes place. Whichever one you believe is a personal choice, but both are equally valid as equally invalid, but simply put, both cannot be in the same universe due to pivotal contradictions.